have your slides up here. There they go. Thank you, Marcus. Um, so as Marcus said, thank you for that introduction. Um, I love chaos. <laughs> Uh, I own two businesses. I own Parkville Coffee, and I also own a, an independent publishing imprint called Word Wraith Books. Um, I have a toddler at home, and I'm also expecting right now. Uh, so yeah, whenever there is a, a spot in my schedule, I fill it up. <laughs> um, and so uh, I get asked often um, what my inspiration was for opening uh, Parkville Coffee here on Main Street. And uh, it's funny because I actually wasn't the one that opened the shop. I worked for the previous owner for about five, six years, and I ended up purchasing the shop from him in 2017. So um, this talk today is going to kind of be about, um, you know, my, my journey to, to ownership with Parkville Coffee and kind of the things that I've done since, um, since becoming the owner to involve the community and what I kind of want to do in the future with that as well. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, so I wonder the quote that my parents told me my whole life. I'm sure you've heard it before because I'm, a lot of people say it. I looked online to see if it was there's actually like an origination to it, and I couldn't find one. So um, my whole life, um, my parents. Uh, would always say, find what you love doing and make money doing it. Uh, my parents are entrepreneurs, and so they've always kind of instilled that in me. Um, so naturally, I, uh, I think it might be on the wrong side. We need the previous slide, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and actually, I chose, uh, you know, the quite possibly one of the hardest things there is to make money doing next to being a starving artist, and that is to be a writer. Uh, so... Um, I, you know, I, since I was young, I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be an author. And so, um, you know, people don't choose to become a writer or an author because they think they will get rich. <laughs> they, they choose to be a writer because of passion and because there's this like storytelling energy inside that just yearns to get out and be told. Um, so, so I went to college to get my English degree. Uh, that seemed, seemed like the next step to me. And um, I went to, you know, community college first and then I went to Park University. Uh, <laughs> and um, so I am a, a part grad of uh, 2012, and um, I think that this picture that's not not coming, not loading. The next one? Uh, no, it's still on that slide. It should be on number two. Uh, it was just a picture of me in my cap and gown celebrating in the parking lots. Um, but oh, that's yeah. okay if it doesn't come up. We'll just imagine it in my burgundy gown. Um, so, uh, so to pay my way through college, um, I got a job in financial services as a bank teller, which ended up being great because it helps me to learn budgets, uh, how to build my credit score. Um, essentially, it gave me like the experience and financial knowledge foundation for my life. And as a young person and someone who would own later own two businesses, it's really helped give me a foundation for um, learning how to do all of those things. Um, so I worked at the bank for a little over three years and eventually got to the point where I was so mentally exhausted by the end of the day working, going to school, that I just didn't have any time to write, which was ultimately my goal in the end. So um, yes, of course, I was writing for my, my writing assignments for my degree, but I wasn't writing creatively, which was ultimately what, what was filling my well. So I knew nearing graduation at Park and getting my bachelor's in English writing that if I wanted to be an author, I, ha I had to get out of financial services. I had to do something else. I had to find something else that would balance well with that writing. So um, I was in my capstone seminar class, com you know, complaining about the bank. <laughs> and one of my classmates says casually, oh, you should get a job at Parkville Coffee. We need more girls on the staff. And <laughs> I thought that was funny. And I'm like, okay. Um, my first thought was, you know, where's Parkville Coffee? Um, as a commuter to Park, I was coming from the South metro and I never I would go to class and then leave I never went further into downtown where where the community was and where you know well I, the extended community from Park University lived I didn't even know it existed so um which is you know something that is I'm passionate about um making connections with uh so um so yeah that was my first question um and so my second was you know what goes better with books than coffee? So after that class ended, I walked over to the shop and I applied and I got the job. 
Um, and so uh, basically the rest is history. So little did I know that working at the shop would be, you know, a transition. I thought it would be a transition job, leaving college, going into life to become, you know, be an author. And um, that like walking to that coffee shop changed the course of my entire life. So, um, okay, you can do the next slide. So I immediately fell in love with it. I fell in love with the story of coffee, uh, where it came from, the global closeness that I received um, from knowing the families and the farms that we were purchasing the coffee beans from, um, the story of creating an experience in the form of a cup of coffee um, or a specialty espresso drink, um, like shown up there, um, especially the art and the science that goes into doing something so simple sounding as making a cup of coffee. Um, and most importantly, um, I fell in love with the story of every community member that walked into the shop and the fact that I could make their day just a little better with a craft that I really enjoyed doing. Um, so the writer in me saw the shop as an ode to original coffee houses. Um, you know, the building that we are housed in is, uh, was built in 1853. There's so much history there and the history of coffee houses and those stone walls, um, I just feel like so many things started in coffee houses, conversations, first dates, business meetings, research studying. Uh, and so to continue to my story, I ended up finding the perfect balance between working and writing. And I worked my way up in the ranks over the years. years. So eventually nearly six years later, I came to another crossroads in my career. So you can do the next slide. Um, at that point, I was the store manager and I had started a publishing company with a partner, um, and that's Jenny up there in the, the, the top pictures. Um, we had already published several of our own books under it. Um, and so those are just some of the examples of just the different, different books that I have. Um, today, I've, I've got, I have 10 published books and I'm, work, I'm always working on the next one. So I'm working on the next one now. <laughs> um, and everybody asks me how I have time to do that with everything else going on, but uh, you, you find time for the things that you love. So there, there's always just snippets of time here and there. And of course I go through, you know, spouts of not writing for a couple months because other things are gaining my attention, but it's all about finding a balance. Um, and so I knew as store manager at that point that I, I had gone the highest I could go with Parkville Coffee. I, I either had to make the decision of, you know, approaching the owner and asking about being a partner and buying in or leaving. So I went and I talked to the previous owner, Josh. I don't know if um, some of you may know him. Um, and I knew he was showing signs of disinterest. And at that point, I was already running most of the day-to-day -day operations as the store manager. Um, so I asked him about wanting a partner. And that's when he actually said, um, actually, I'm sort of on my way out. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> um, I make it sound really easy, but it was actually a, a, you know, a couple years of negotiating NDAs complete scrutiny of my resume, financial history, um, all of that before I was able to secure an SBA loan for the shop to buy it. And so that was probably the most stressful year of my life. Um, but once I signed the papers at closing and got the, the shop master key in my hands, all of that just sort of melted away. Um, and you can do the next slide. So that's me. Um, it's really small, but I'm holding the key. I just got the. I just signed the papers, and my husband and I came to the shop, and he took a picture of me holding the key outside the shop. Um, and it's it's fun to look at this picture because actually a lot about the face of it has changed as well. Just you know, we redid the benches, we redid the awning, so there's a lot of updates that have happened since then. And this was in 2017. Okay, so um, um, you can do the next slide. So uh, just to briefly mention what I've done since taking over, um, I started, oof, it looks like it's missing quite a few pictures. Um, that's okay. A couple more just need to load on top of that one. But um, so I started a, um, a way to uh, kind of meld my two worlds together, writing and coffee. And so I, um, I opened a, a book nook for local authors to sell their books in. It's in the upstairs of the coffee shop. So um, I'm, I'm working, it's so much fun to, to network with these local and, and independent authors um, that I didn't even know, you know, were in my community um, and then give them a place to physically house their books. There's been so many 
you know, everything's online now. And um, I had my books in two different local bookstores that closed down over the last few years. And so I was trying to think of a brainstorm a way to give authors another place to sell in person. So we've got um, our local book nook upstairs and they also um, have local art on the walls. And I allow, you know, um, any type of events like book signings and launch parties and um, gallery openings, all of those things happen at the shop. We started bottling our cold brew, which was a huge um, accomplishment for me. I'd wanted to do it for so many years. Um, I felt like we were behind in the coffee community at doing this. So it was really exciting as a small business to, to find the resources to be able to do that. Um, we, and I've expanded a lot of our wholesale department, including purchasing a delivery van, doing um, traveling latte bar events. Um, I did have pictures for all of those, but it's okay. And technology is technology. <laughs> um, and so, so yeah, um, those are kind of a, a, some of the things that I've done. And it's cliche to think that um, if you enjoy doing the work that you're doing, that you're never working a day in your life. But I'm here to say that I truly believe that that is real. I'm living proof that that cliche is a cliche for a reason. Um, and so um, if you want to do the next slide, please. Okay. Um, my hope is that whenever somebody walks into my coffee shop, and on Main Street in downtown and orders a coffee that they feel our passion for the craft and that they feel, you know, a safe, inclusive space for the community to help build on and help shape the rest of the shop story and ultimately all of our stories as well. Um, so thank you. Thank you.